following is a presentation of the 2023 Screen Time Report, which covers trends and data about a major topic of our time, screen time. My name is Kenneth Schlenker, and I am joined to deliver this presentation by Antoine Toussaint, Creative Director at Opal, who previously spent 15 years working for the likes of Apple, where he notably co-authored the Shot on iPhone campaign, and at Snap, where he worked on all things brand. And now, here's the 2023 Screen Time Report. We are Opal, and our mission is to empower people to focus better each and every day. Opal is the focus company. We're passionate about helping people create more space for focus and better balance our digital lives. And so one of the things we really believe in at Opal is <clears throat> time is life's ultimate currency. So a lot more than dollars or Bitcoin, the only real currency that matters uh, is time. And we believe that focus is just simply how we choose to spend it every day. In simple terms, focus is the ability to resist distractions. Uh, and our lives are really full of them. Uh, and none is more powerful than screens. So this presentation uh, will walk you through uh, some of the truths and trends about our relationship to uh, screens and screen time. And what I'm really excited about is not only we, we looked at a lot of data that's out there and that's been published, but also we're for the first time ever publishing our own data, uh, in particular to answer a very simple question, which is, you know, how much time are people spending on their phones? Um, turns out, very hard to answer. There's no consensus on the average phone screen time. As a matter of fact, if you look at every single media publication that's been out, you know, from uh, TV to written press of you know, very established publications, their sources are all over the place. Uh, it goes all the way from you know, three hours and 30 minutes in some instances, all the way to five hours in others. And one thing in common that all these sources have is these are self-reported numbers. So you basically go around, you ask people you know, what your screen time is. But turns out, not the most reliable way uh, to get access to this data. One uh, study we found, which was the most reliable, um, was actually based on 667 iPhone users in 2021. What they did is they went around and they asked people, what's your screen time? The average was three hours and 32 minutes. And then they checked, uh, looking at the actual number on uh, their phone. Uh, and the real number was five hours and 39 minutes. And so what you see here is that the self-reported number was 40% lower than the actual number. What this means is, Every single number and data point you've heard about screen time up to now is likely to be underreported massively. And that's why we're pretty excited um, to today release our own data. So we talked about this one study that has 667 uh, sample size. Uh, but you know, we're pretty excited that today we're going to show you numbers that are based on a sample size of 290,000 people. This is uh, essentially people who are using Opal, and we report their overall uh, daily um, screen time all over the world. And the number is five hours and eight minutes on average for the entire Opal community. And keep in mind that these are people who are pretty mindful about their screen time because they use an app like Opal. That They're actually saving quite a bit of time with this app. So when you look at uh, what number would it have been if they didn't have the app, there's one way we can answer that, which is, we know the difference between their screen time when they first started using the app and the screen time uh, after, after that. And the difference is, on average, an hour and 23 minutes. That's how much time we save each day the typical Opal customer. And so you know, what you can do is then build a projection to say, OK, what would have happened if people didn't have the app uh, to manage their screen time? And this is where we get to 6 hours and 31 minutes. This is the number that we think is closer to a true projection of a very, very large sample group of how long people actually spend uh, on their smartphone. But you know, there's more to this. Um, so we can look at country level data, for example. Uh, and when we look at the global average of five hours and eight minutes, we see that there's differences between Nigeria being the top uh, country here, Ghana and Kazakhstan. Nigeria has over two hours more, Kazakhstan over an hour. And then countries with lower screen time, like Slovenia, Denmark, and Luxembourg. And then you know, within uh, the US, for example, which is our largest market, but also you know, notable differences, right? This is a map of screen time uh, per state, where you see the states with the highest uh, screen time has over 20 minutes more than the average, 
uh, and the lowest has over 30 minutes less. So there's, there's quite a bit of difference, and the sample sizes are healthy enough for us to be able to drive these conclusions. And then when you look at city data, it's also super interesting to rank cities uh, in terms of their screen time. So New York, all the way at the top, with 36 minutes above average. Las Vegas, 35 minutes. Miami, plus 25 minutes. And then you have uh, cities with lower screen time, like Denver, 22 minutes less, Portland, 22 minutes, and Salt Lake City, 23 minutes. The other uh, fascinating piece here is we were able to look at screen time by device. And what this shows is um, the bigger screen time on the left here, and then the smaller, the smaller screens on the right. And then we look at the average screen time per device. And it's almost like, comical how, how perfect this, um, this graph is here. Um, it, it also maps up quite perfectly with, uh, with the actual picture of the devices and, and how you see them uh, being, uh, where the smaller they are, the, um, the, the less time we spend on them. When you, when you look at this in the simplified view, what you see is the max sizes iPhone average is 5 hours and 38 minutes. Uh, the medium, I think what we call it normal or medium, is 4 hours and uh, 47 minutes. And then the smaller devices, the mini and nano, I think, are 4 hours and, 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 uh, and 34 minutes. This is a meaningful difference, about an hour less on small devices than on, on the big ones. Does that surprise you at all? Yeah. So we're gonna, something really elegant, almost kind of inevitable, like to see this chart uh, mapped out and pretty much one-to-one -to, -one, yeah. um, <clears throat> to the actual like, size of your screen. So yes, if yeah. you have more screen, you have more screen time. Uh, one of the things that we um, that we that we like at Opal is to put things into context, right? Like what we find is uh, the most shared screen uh, on our entire app is the screen where we show people a lifetime projection of how much they're about to spend um, on uh, on their phone, and that's really what this calculation is about here on this slide. It's five hours and eight minutes out of sixteen hours awake on average, um, so it's five hours uh, and eight minutes out of sixteen hours, which maps out to um, just about two days over two days a week, which maps out to four months of the year, and it maps out to 22 years of your life. So that's 22 years of people's lives spent in front of a phone. Um, the average American gets a smartphone age 12 and lives until 77. And so 22 years of, of this uh, time uh, will be spent in front of a smartphone at the current rate. This is an average, so a lot of people are way above this. Uh, if you look at 10 hours a day, which is not as uncommon, right? We see this quite often. That maps out to 40 years uh, of your life. So um, why are we here? Why, why did we get to, to this point you know, is, a, is another interesting question, right? Smartphones are too good. Um, on balance, those are amazing tools, and they're a net positive for our lives. Um, and actually, this is really Proved, proved out on this chart here, where you see people that really feel like their smartphone has made their lives better. Um, the feeling is getting a little bit more muted um, the last seven years. But this is, um, I think that's the ground truth that we should uh, really acknowledge is that uh, smartphones are amazing. One thing we find is screens are also isolating ourselves from each other. Um, this is kind of a very common uh, scene we see in every major city around the world. Recently, Tim Cook. Um, said something uh, in, in this month, actually, in an interview. If you're looking at the phone more than you're looking in someone's eyes, you're doing the wrong thing. Uh, there's definitely some a lot of consciousness there, so much so that uh, Apple introduced something called screen time uh, in, uh, uh, in, in 2018, which um, allows everybody who owns an iPhone to uh, measure how much time they're spending on different apps, how much time they're spending on their phone, and also to put in place some restrictions. But Originally, this was intended as a child-parent thing, you know, parents being able to uh, put restrictions. Um, and you know, Google uh, followed suit and created digital well-being on Android. Everybody has access to some basic settings to manage their screen time. And this is what it looks like. You know, what more recently they built uh, APIs and abilities for other developers to build on top of it. And that's what you know powered Opal, and we we use screen time API on, on iPhone, and soon we'll do on Android. Um, and what they did, and this is 2022 with Screen Time API and iPhone, is extend uh, the existing child, child parent control to allow anyone to put their own restrictions and their own uh, uh, use cases on their own device. And so that's why today, the millions of people using Opal, uh, from you know people who are uh, engineers to people who are content creators to people who are uh, teachers, all the way to teenagers, um, who essentially are all looking for ways to better manage their screen time. When when something is completely new. 
and it's a really new concept, it's, it's usually hard for people to understand. It's better to actually use analogies. And I think you have a tremendous uh, analogy here that I'd love for you to talk about. Sure. The, the comparison that we find useful is one between our food diet um, and our digital diet. It also happens that um, the little screen in your pocket also is the same shape as like a fridge. So that helps. What you put in your fridge is your responsibility. Like whether you want to eat something healthy or unhealthy today, that's really up to you. Um, and I think the same can be said about how you consume media or just consume time on your on your smartphone. But the only difference being that your smartphone is kind of like an infinite bottomless fridge full of like your favorite junk food accessible like any second of the day. Um, and so it requires maybe like a little bit more discipline. But one of the reasons why this comparison works well, in my opinion, is that they both really talk about the same battleground, which is our brain chemistry. When you eat something like sugary, like ice cream, or if you like scroll through social media and like see that people have liked your photo, um, it tickles like the same neurotransmitter called dopamine. I think most people are aware of this. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, this little visual that you can see here like spells out something very simple, which is some apps are better than others. There's good screen time and then like not so good screen time. This grid here shows a different, the inside of different people's fridges. Um, and what we're saying here, if you go to the next slide, is that just like your food diet and what you have in your fridge says a lot about you, like the way you use your phone says a lot about you too. A visual representation, fridge, phone, fridge, phone, is so powerful because it's something that's personal with diet um, in a way which is not yet the case for screen time. But one of the things we really believe in at Opal is that in the next 10 years, uh, people will become just as conscious of their screen time as they are of their diets. Some people might have seen um, this floating around last year where George Mack, he's a, a writer and a marketing executive. And the way he kind of solved his digital diet issue is that he basically split it in two. So he's got one phone that he calls a cocaine phone where basically it's like anything goes. And then like on the other, he has another phone which is called a kale phone for um, only very essential um, functions. There's also uh, people who put away their phones in lockboxes or kitchen, kitchen uh, lockbox. Uh, there's one called Stolp, for example, uh, out of Belgium, an amazingly designed box um, that people use all over the world. So it's pretty interesting to see also like the physical separation, two phones or locking your phone away. Or you can use an app like Opal and there are others. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about like relationships. So we're all social creatures. Um, and here we're going to scan through a few examples of like how excessive screen time can impact, I guess, what matters the most, which is people around us. So people are starting to call out um, essentially digital diet as a filter when looking for a you know, compatible mate. You want someone who's a good communicator, but you also want someone who's not like, essentially living into their phones. There's a, this is an interesting study. They asked couples whether or not they would agree with the following statement. My spouse is often on the phone when I want to talk or do something as a couple. And so people for whom the, the answer would be yes have much lower marital happiness. And um, also it leads to greater worries about divorce. And of course, uh, more screens means less sex, less intimacy. This is um, a pretty strong illustration of this, um, this notion. What is true for, uh, for couples, Kenneth, is also true for like interpersonal relationships or like parents, child, and even um, as a family. This is a, a recent cover uh, from the New Yorker that essentially is a snapshot of the modern American family's Thanksgiving table. I think it, it speaks for itself. And there's also this concept called fubbing, uh, which is when you're kind of snubbing by just being on your phone, like a friend of yours or your partner, essentially like letting your screen like, getting in the way of, um, uh, of being present with people who matter. There's a relationship between uh, loneliness and screen time. I think we, we, can, we can talk about um, a little bit more. Um, this is showing how people spend their time. It's a pretty uh, striking uh, statistic, which is showing us that people spend a lot more time alone. Uh, definitely, there's been the COVID lockdown effect, 2020, 2021, beginning of it. But what we see is it remains to be said how it's going to evolve. Uh, it seems that we're not going to go back to normal. There's no normal. 70% um, less time spent in person with friends uh, in the past two decades. Let that sink in. That's pretty, that's pretty unbelievable. Um, there's a, a whole range of data that supports 
that supports this. And then the consequence of this is people feeling lonely. Uh, this is uh, people feeling more lonely uh, in, um, in, in the EU, uh, but also in the US. We now have uh, declared officially uh, by the US government, via the US Surgeon General, uh, Vivek Murphy, who basically declared loneliness as a national uh, health epidemic. And he specifically cited screen time as one of the causes and one of the areas of focus of the US, uh, the US government. There's a whole range of data points to show how loneliness connects to health outcomes, negative health outcomes in particular, which justifies why it's such an important um, topic for uh, the US health authorities. And one of the consequences of this is a mental health crisis. A lot more people reporting mental health issues across age groups, um, and specifically, here you see the 25 to 39 age group who's been affected the worst. Um, and so what we've seen here is an, on a number of sides, a number of fronts, uh, regulation bumping up uh, to, to curb this issue. Um, there's a whole range of US states right now that have, uh, that have filed a lawsuit against Meta uh, on use of addictive features. And more recently, this is of October 2023, the New York governor, Kathy uh, Hochul, um, bids, uh, bid a specific act called Stop Addictive Feeds Exploitation Act, Face Safe Act, which aims to allow parents to opt their kids out of social feeds curation algorithms. Uh, obviously, there's uh, regulation takes time, but it's definitely coming. In Europe, um, there's, a, there's a number of things that have been put in place already, uh, like the Addictive Design Report, which came out um, to specifically study what social media companies have done to build addictive uh, patterns in the Digital Services Act, uh, which just came into effect. Uh, China is an example of a more restrictive approach. In 2021, there's regulation that was put in place that mandated online video game companies to essentially stop kids from accessing any games at specific windows of time. And we've seen Tencent actually since then report a 96% decrease in gaming hours uh, by underage gamers from three years ago. We take these numbers with a grain of salt. But certainly, uh, it's a very restrictive approach that, uh, that China's chosen to, to make. In 2023, there's a new regulation, uh, even more restrictive, that's coming out, which is saying under eight years old, no more than 40 minutes per day, uh, no digital services served to children from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, and essentially, the goal here is to enforce this regulation on the technology providers uh, to uh, make sure that there's no access to this information. I mean, what this shows, it's recognition by governments all around the world that this is a strategic topic that, um, you know, for the future generations, for education and for uh, the good of society, there needs to be something that happens in terms of regulation and on screen time. But we didn't talk about productivity yet. Um, and that's an interesting topic as well. This has been studied um, and there's still a lot actually that's about to come out on this. Uh, one uh, study from 2020 showed that uh, the average US employer uh, employee spent 56 minutes so about an hour in their workday uh, doing unproductive screen time. This is based on self-reported data. Um, and this is also 2020. There's an also interesting you know, field, which is the, the field of switch cost effect. Basically, what happens when you're interrupted and distracted is not only you spend time on the distraction, but then it takes time for you to get back to whatever you're doing. It takes about 23 minutes to regain focus after a distraction. And then the cost to the entire US economy is $450 billion uh, in 2015. Now, this is, what, eight years ago. Uh, since then, the, the numbers in terms of uh, screen time have, have, have skyrocketed. The real cost in 2013, 2023 is likely to be much, uh, much higher. And we're looking forward to having more research published on this topic. One of the things that we see is, that's very interesting is there's just growing interest in screen time, and people are becoming more and more aware. One of the ways you can see this is um, the people searching for screen time or digital detox on Google. Um, but generally, there's growing self-awareness on the topic of, of screen time. What if you could talk a little bit about this? Sure. I think what's what we can be really optimistic about is that um, actually this is a bottom-up kind of like mainstream awareness. Um, so here on this slide, you can see that the vast majority of, of uh, US adults uh, believe that too much screen time can affect their mental health. And their attention span is impacted by it. I guess like something that was most surprising for us um, to see over the last couple of years um, is that the, the, the group that is most vocal about um, excessive screen time are actually our little brothers and sisters or cousins. They're basically teens. 
Um, and you can see this illustrated in the chart um, right here, where between 2015 and 2022, there's an increase um, in awareness. It's especially true for 18 to 29 year olds. Yeah, it's in so 58% of 18 to 25 year olds said they believe they use their phone too much in 2015, and now it's 81%. This is basically like almost everyone, right? And it's interesting, we don't have data here under 18, but I would argue this awareness is even higher uh, in those categories. One of the things we see at Opal, which is fascinating, is so many 14, 15, 16, 17 year old download the app on their own. There's no parents involved. They download our app because they want to increase their awareness and they want to manage their screen time issue. This is such a level of maturity um, and awareness that is uh, so mind blowing to me. Uh, you know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't as smart at all when I was 14, 15, and 16. Um, so what this shows is there is there's a rising awareness. And the next generation actually uh, might be the most aware generation uh, about screen time ever. 54% of teens said it would be hard to give up social media. So you know, even though they want to, um, it's very hard. And the, part of the reason is we know this. These products have been designed to be very addictive because uh, this is the business model of a lot of companies that uh, thrive on the attention economy. 92% of 18 to 29-year-olds sleep with their phone. Um, attachments, physical attachments is very strong and it's clearly an indicator of some addictive behavior. There's a lot of scientific debates around the term addiction. But um, what's true is that uh, when you take people's phone away, there's even a term that was coined that is now part of the dictionary called nomophobia, which is the fear of being without mobile phone. You might have experienced this. If you, you know, forget your phone at home or, or even like lose your phone and get it stolen, uh, there's a really strong uh, fear that gets uh, generated. And so th there's this awareness that's rising, um, but there's also a lot of people that are looking for solutions and actually taking action, right? And that's actually super interesting how this is growing. 53% um, of people, um, uh, this is based in 2021 uh, study, the same we, we quoted earlier, tried to cut their screen time down in the last 18 months, the majority of the population. 31%, um, uh, one person out of three uh, said that someone has commented on their phone use in a negative way. It's affecting our relationships, so people are talking about it. Um, and um, this is interesting when you look at uh, whether people are tracking their screen time, but you know, 30% among 16 and 24 um, actually track their screen time. That's where we are today. One of the things we're going to talk about later is we think this is this is likely to, to, to change dramatically and to get to much higher proportion. There's a lot of really interesting organizations, some that we've partnered with, uh, that are activists in the in the in the space. Unplug Collaborative, Log Off Movement, have the story designed it for us in various uh, ways, and many others. I'm not quoting here. Um, they're pushing legislation, pushing awareness. You can also quote the Humane Tech Movement, which has been a big inspiration for us, um, <clears throat> which has been, you know, notably producing this uh, uh, this kind of blockbuster. A documentary on Netflix uh, uh, called The Social Dilemma that really raised the awareness level uh, of the population on, on these topics. Right. Yeah, so this is um, something that we've, uh, we've probably all heard about. Uh, dumb phones are back. Um, and so it was very much kind of framed into like more of a fashion Napping statement, a flip but it's really about social, social media and mental health. Um, and so and there's a lot of like really interesting product people out there who I think who want to really invest and like, you know, experiment and like see like, hey, like, what can we give people who are really committed to a very, very healthy and disciplined digital diet? And this is one example. So you see like Kendrick Lamar did a, just, I think it was the second edition of the light phone um, that came out not so long ago. It's a beautiful, beautifully designed uh, dumb phone, essentially. I, uh, I got to actually meet uh, uh, Joe earlier, if you're listening to me. Hey, uh, who's one of the founders of light phone in New York. Um, they've been in this for many, many years. And it's really incredible, uh, the, the hardware that they've built. Now it's really picking up in a major way in culture, I think. Super interesting. Maybe we can talk about like, what does the future look like you know, beyond that? Um, you know, we can think about the origin of screens, you know, movies, very long time ago, uh, all the way to the screens in our pockets and the screens we wear, uh, like smartwatches. And then what comes later, which could be you know, screens we live in, like XR headsets, but also maybe screenless devices uh, powered by AI with audio. We're going to talk a bit, a bit about it. There, there, are, there are chances that this might go wrong, right? And that we uh, might end up living in a virtual simulation, like, uh, for example, Ready Player One, the illustration of this, or, or for this illustration of what childhood uh, may look like. We can also look at uh, what social media is doing and how it's evolving. Um, you know, for example, 
uh, Meta introducing uh, AI-powered celebrities with celebrity deals like Kendall Jenner and many, many others, uh, AI girlfriends or boyfriends, which are taking up the app stores. Uh, if you thought you know, your Instagram or TikTok feed was bad and addictive, wait until AI experiences happen. Uh, they're going to make the current experience uh, and dopamine hits of social media feel like uh, broccoli. I think uh, Yuval Hariri, the, the author of Sapiens, uh, recently talked about, uh, about it in this way, which is that um, social media you know, hacked your attention. AI has the potential to hack your intimacy. It's a different level of, um, of interaction. So that's one way to look at it. And of course, there are these risks. But then there's also some optimistic uh, views, right? And I'm curious to, to, to hear your take on Humane, for example. It's the most direct, I guess, attack on excessive screen time is just to remove screens. Um, so here it's the stuff substituted with a little laser projection. I mean, I think the ethos and the mission, the North Star of Humane, is very much um, geared towards solving digital addiction or uh, dopamine addiction. So we'll see um, how that plays out, but um, it's definitely like an interesting effort in that yeah. direction. You know, if the business incentive is still based on monetizing your attention, uh, still based on selling you stuff that uh, you didn't necessarily ask for, then we're going to build, whether it's with screens or without screens, technology which uh, will be just about capturing people's attentions and directing us from focus to distraction. This is really what, what this is about. But yeah, I think that's also, you know, one illustration is a, a, a jean Julien, beautiful illustration here, but, you know, you can change the screen, not necessarily going to change the behavior. It can be smaller, it can even disappear. This is where our attention is going to go and maybe not in the real world. So we talked about a lot of stuff today. We talked about um, screen time data with the first ever Opal screen time data, five hours and eight minutes uh, on average spent on a smartphone that actually uh, equates to 22 years on average uh, for uh, over a lifetime. We talked about some of the worrying things we see around loneliness, around uh, mental health, and around the productivity cost of uh, screen time. And then we talked about the reasons to be hopeful. So people are more and more aware of their screen time. We see this across age groups. And people are looking for solutions to better manage their screen time. Um, one of the things that we rethink and that we, we discussed um, in length today is how screen time is the new diet. Uh, we think that in the coming years, more people will care about their screen time uh, just as much as they care about their diet. And so that's something that we're pretty excited to, uh, to see happen in the coming years. And speaking of this, 2024 uh, is around the corner. It just started. And a few things we see will happen. First, increased awareness of screen time amongst individuals and organizations. More and more people will care and measure this data. Then uh, software and screen time management strategies will become a lot more mainstream. They're still pretty niche. More people will start to use them. Um, then we see more and more public figures come out in favor of mindful uh, screen time. We actually highlight a lot of them on our social media uh, when they speak out about their mindful screen time uh, from people like George Clooney all the way to Dua Lipa recently. And we think this trend is likely to become ubiquitous. Uh, we see U.S. colleges and high schools start to adopt screen time software as one of the strategies to manage this, uh, uh, this trend. And then we see new research on the effects of screen time on mental health and productivity that will be published this year. We know of a number of great projects underway. It takes a long time to produce research, and they're likely to come out in 2024. And then regulation uh, is likely to come up in the U.S. and abroad, and we'll follow this trend really closely. So these are some of our predictions for 2024. The big picture is screen time is becoming a bigger topic for people, um, and we're pretty excited to see that. Um, so thank you so much for listening, and thank you so much, Antoine, uh, for, for joining us uh, from, uh, from the very first time that we met and talked about screen time to producing this report. A lot has happened, but we'll do more of it, right? Absolutely. Thanks, Kenneth. Thank you.